Hi, and welcome to the Creative Mojo podcast. Uh, my name is Joanne, and obviously I'm the host of this podcast. This is technically my second episode, but um, I had some technical issues with the first episode. I will freely admit that I'm not super great with technical stuff, um, computer technical stuff. Um, I kind of just know enough to get by doing the things I need to do. So um, I struggled with uh, editing that first episode and getting it up on YouTube and I should have done a little more research first and I got it up on YouTube and I know a couple people watched it, maybe like three or four people and uh, but something happened to it I have no idea what and it's no longer up on YouTube and by the, that was a couple days after I had posted it and I had foolishly deleted the um, the original file so yeah those few people who saw that episode are the only ones I think who are ever going to probably see that episode but um, this is episode two I have figured out a few more things hopefully that um, oh, my hair looks like crap but whatever um, to improve the quality, uh, uh, figuring out a little bit more about how to get a better size for the video and um, I did some opening credits which hopefully are going to attach to this. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. The, um, the music you'll hear if I do successfully attach the opening credits is a little piece of music written by my husband. Uh, his name is Tim Williams. He's a professional musician and um, he has done underscore music for a number of plays and things in town here that he's written instrumental pieces for. So I just snagged a piece of his music off of one of his CDs and uh, used it at the beginning. He came in the room while I was working on that and he was like, are you stealing my music? And I, but I knew he, in truth he wouldn't really care. So anyway, um, I should, uh, I keep like the first episode, I sort of launch into stuff and then have to backtrack. Um, as I said, that uh, my name is Joanne. Um, I am coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and um, my username on Ravelry is Auntie Joe, and my username on Instagram is Auntie Joe One Two. And I think those are probably the relevant places to find and follow me. And um, I probably will start a group for this podcast. Uh, sometime in the next couple of days once I've got this video sorted and uploaded. So anyway, um, I just want to kind of dive right into the stuff I want to talk to you about today. I have one finished object. Um, those few of you who saw my first, that mythical now first episode, um, I talked about a sweater that I had started quite a while ago and uh, it only needed one sleeve and a neckband. And it's completed. It has. It's one sleeve. It has two sleeves now. Ta-da! And it has its neckband. It's all, the knitting is all done on it. It still needs a bunch of ends woven in. It's got a bunch of ends on the inside and it needs a wash and a block. But I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the pattern is the Fiona cardigan by Amy Miller. Or no, sorry, the Princess Fiona by Amy Miller. And uh, it's a knit out of um, skein uh, merino silk sport which is a 50% silk 50% merino blend it's so soft it's like so soft and cuddly you can't wouldn't believe it it's got this really pretty lace panel that runs uh, starts at a sort of triangle point and widens and runs down the inside from under one arm to the bottom um, it's a little big I have a bad habit of sort of making things I think I'm actually slightly smaller than I think I am which is ironic but so I have a bad habit of making stuff a bit too big for me um, but I kind of my intention was sort of that I wanted it to be a nice kind of sweatshirty type sweater and it's definitely that I think it will be very cozy to wear um, the yarn as I said is beautifully soft it is starting to pill a bit already which is unfortunate I think it's that um, the, the merino blend in here is incredibly soft and maybe the silk as well um, so it's going to pale a bit, I can tell, and I think I need to get myself one of those, what's it called, the gleaner, I think, um, probably to, to keep it from getting really ratty and pilly too quick. But I still love, love, love this yarn base, and I'm quite excited that I have two other sweaters worth of uh, yarn in this base that hopefully at some point I will knit up. 
So anyway, that's my finished object um, for this week, and I'm very happy to have got that off the needles. And then I have a couple of other things that I've been working on um, that I did show before, but uh, I've made progress on all of them. Um, this next one is my um, Vertices Unite Shawl by Stephen West. Um, I'm really enjoying this, and I did a lot on this this week before I stopped and started in on that sweater so it's going pretty well it's um it's going to be a very large shawl it's all tangled up in its own yarn right now but um and it's on some different several different needles on holders and stuff so oh, come on untangle um but it's uh it's knit in uh sections so you knit one section and then when you complete that then you pick up stitches and you knit another section going a different direction and on and on there are six sections in total so I'm about halfway through the third section so the first section which is the biggest one is all of this purple and white um, this is skein top draw sock one of my very favorite favorite yarns of which I have multitudes of, of this yarn in many different colorways um, and these two colors are thistle and French macaroon and then the next section, section two, which is now on a holder, um, eventually the whole thing gets an uh, I-cord bind off all the way around. So some of the stitches uh, along the edges, um, you put on a holder for the I-cord bind off. So this is the next section. Um, it's actually striped, I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, probably. Uh, in two colors, cherub and wild apple. And then uh, so these are, it's five colors in total. So these are actually all five of the colors that the shawl will be uh, when it's finished. This is the fifth color. I love this color. I'm just like crazy in love with how beautiful this is. This color is um, called Dapple. So like I said, that's section three. Then there's a section, I think, I think section four is just the purple from this, the thistle. Um, then there's a stripe section that's the pale color here that the, the macro French macaroon and some of this not the green but the sort of purpley browny color that it's striped with the cherub there's a striped section of that and then there's a one last solid section that that will be in this green I think that's six and then I cord uh, all the way around it in that green as well so oops I'm on the wrong side of that there's the stripes so and I can see that better the thistle is the sort of browny, purpley color, and the wild apple is the green. <clears throat> so that's going to be beautiful. And um, now that I've got that sweater off the needles, I can get back to making time on this. And I'm hoping that this will be done not too long. Um, I'm trying really hard. I have piles over here that you can't see of uh, other works in progress things that I haven't worked on and haven't really touched in a while. And I'm actually trying really hard to be fairly monogamous and sort of really dedicate myself to one larger project and finish that. Because otherwise I end up with projects that sit on the needles halfway done for months and months and months and months. And then it gets hard to pick them up because I can't always remember where I was in the pattern um, and stuff like that. So even though I make notes, you know, sometimes it's still hard to pick up and follow through. Um, on something that you haven't touched in six or more months. So I'm, I'm trying to work on a, a project. I usually have a couple of other smaller projects, things that are like the on the go projects, I guess, basically things that I can throw in my purse that I can knit while I'm somewhere waiting or working or whatever. So that's my, this will be my next uh, sort of dedicated project. And then I have the, my two sort of on the go projects a pair of vanilla socks. I finished, I showed this last week and I was there. I, I knit top down, so I did from there down to the toe this week. And I started, I just have a teeny weeny little cuff of the second sock. Um, I'm really enjoying the color of these. This is uh, in a yarn I got years, several years ago that was in my stash, a Hampton Art yarn, the Hay yarns. Uh, I have no idea whether they're even selling anymore, and I don't know what the colorway is. I lost the tag. Um, so 
but it's really pretty and it's a nice sturdy sock it's going to be good these are actually for a girl that I work with sometimes I have so many friends who see me knitting especially because I knit quite a bit at work and they request sorry I'm wiping my face it's actually very warm in here today um they request uh knitting all the time I have all these people that I work with who go oh when are you gonna knit me something and I'm foolish enough to kind of almost always agree to do that so I'm always working on something that I'm probably going to give away and that pair of socks is for somebody and oh my other kind of on the go project is also for somebody else this is for my nephew Liam who just turned 10 uh, I pulled the needle out that's great but I'll fix that later um, it's a sock head hat um, sort of I kind of modified that pattern a bit uh, I've knit lots of these so but it's really pretty it's in a um bloom and fiber art socks that rocks socks that rock uh, mill end that he picked out this color so I'm about a third of the way through that I'm kind of be careful with that because i've dropped those stitches <clears throat> so those are the those are the things that i'm actively working on at the moment i have a couple of other projects kind of sitting around waiting to go. I tend to mull over other things I want to do for a bit. And then I um, will kind of think about them and dream a little bit about the yarn and what colors I want to use and what yarn I want to use. And then I'll kind of go through my stash and pick out some yarn. And uh, eventually um, I'll kind of lay it out and leave it out for a while. And if I'm still kind of really into that project after I've done that, then I know that's something that I'm that's going to be on the needles fairly soon. So there's two things that are sort of sitting staring at me waiting to go when I, um, I don't know which one will be next um, after I finish the British Easy Night. But uh, one is another Stephen West shawl. I kind of am enamored of his stuff at the moment. Um, and so I'm interested in the Doodler. Uh, that was his mystery shawl, I think, earlier this year. And I'm going to do that shawl, I think. And I'm going to use... Um, where did I put the yarn here? Hedgehog fibers. Um, several years ago, before hedgehog fibers became uh, as popular, I think, as it is now, and she was still kind of a newer business and not as well known, um, I bought a bunch of stuff from her for a while, and then I actually was in her sock club for mm, probably about a year, maybe even at least a year. Um, so I accumulated quite a lot of single skeins of her of her sock yarn um, beautiful beautiful yarn beautiful colors super soft I've gone through a lot of it because I haven't bought really any new I think maybe one or two new skeins of hedgehog in the last couple of years but uh, but I have a one whole bin full of it uh, or about half full now because I've, I've been using it up slowly and I was looking at these three colors together uh, three sort of shades of green there let's see if there's one's called pod um, and this one is swamp love that and this one is sea glass yeah sea glass and so I'm gonna do the doodler in those three colors I don't know which section will be which yet maybe those I don't know anyway that's that's what's gonna be soon and then the last thing that I'm um, keen to to cast on that's a bigger project there'll be lots of other smaller things as well there's usually socks on the needles and that sort of thing but the next bigger project uh, I think is the um, Vera, Ma Vera Valamaki sweater um, breathing space that uh, lots of people are doing right now and I really love that I, I recently finished another Vera Valamaki pattern and I really I like her aesthetic a lot and um, so even though I'd been promising myself I wasn't going to buy new yarn because I have so much already, um, I fell down a little bit in the yarn store earlier this week. I, uh, I should know better. I, I went to get a needle that I needed um, for something. Um, I have a bazillion needles too, but for some reason I, there was a specific needle I needed for something. And I couldn't find the needle I needed, but I bought yarn. <laughs> I'm sure this is something that happens to lots of people, but um, I, even though I have quite a lot of sweater quantities of yarn, I didn't really have anything that seemed right for that pattern, but I really want to make that pattern. So I bought um, some Malabrigo sock um, 
And I got this lovely color, which I don't know if I can pronounce the name of. It is Alcosil. I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyway, um, that's going to be sort of the main body color of the sweater. And then I'm going to stripe it. This is what I bought to stripe it with. You might see a kind of a theme between this and the stuff I just showed you for the shawl. It's, I guess it's because spring is coming. But, um, I love this. This is a beautiful color. What's the name on this? This is Turner. And I think those look really, really pretty together. But then I also had this Malbrigo sock, which is the Archangel. And those look pretty nice together too. So I can't decide whether I'm going to stripe it with this or with this. I don't know. I really don't know. I guess I'll make my mind up at some point. Um, those actually look slightly prettier on camera than they, this is, it's not quite as bright as it's showing there. It's a little bit more muted, but anyway, so that at some point fairly soon will end up on the needle. So those are the things I'm working. Oh, and there's one last thing I was saying. <laughs> one last thing I look over. Actually, there's two last things. I'm such a liar. Um, I, as I saying about knitting stuff for people, friends and people I work with and stuff, I, um, I seem to know a lot of people that I guess are pretty knit worthy because they all really love and appreciate and, and are keen on and wear stuff I, I knit and give away. I'm pretty good at sussing out. I don't give away stuff to people if I don't think that they'll appreciate it. But, um, and another gal that, uh, I worked with who did a, who helped me out with a little bit of uh, computer technology stuff uh, for another project and I was going to pay her a little bit for that and then she said you know rather than money because um, it's not wasn't a ton of money I was going to pay her like a hundred dollars or something she said I'd love it if you knit me some stuff so I've given her a, a cowl uh, and I'm going to do some fingerless gloves for her I'm going to use this which is really 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 pretty this is a zen yarn garden uh, it's a fingering merino cashmere and nylon I think and then the color is vixen and I've got a, a, a pretty sort of cabled fingerless glove pattern picked out for that so sometimes you can probably once the socks are done those will go on the needle and the last thing is that um, I'm kind of just right now dreaming up an idea pro a project for um, some yarn that I've had in my stash for ages I think I bought it three years ago maybe three four years ago um and I was looking for something else the other day and came across it and went oh yeah I really like this when I bought it and uh it would be great for a little summer uh top of some kind so right now I'm I'm just sort of idly looking for patterns and I just did some swatching um I'll show it to you it's uh I've never knit with um it's a what is this? The mixture base on this is um, hemp and cotton and uh, some um, nylon of some sort. Hemp and cotton and something. Modal, I think. Um, so it would make a very nice and it feels very nice. So I got, I have a bunch of this and it's in three different colors. Um, you can see there. So there's the white. It's in the middle. This lovely sort of it's really an orange, I guess, but it's an orangey red. It's a sort of deep orangey, tomatoey red, um, tomatoey orangey color. And then this sort of taupe. It's a little, it's grayish brown. It's a taupe, I think, really. <clears throat> and I think those three colors are really pretty together. So I'm sort of dreaming up some ideas for a, a short sleeve or sleeveless tank. And I started with just swatching. So I did a little swatch on this today. It uh, swatched up really nicely. I still need to wash it to see how it but it's, it's really pretty. So <clears throat> at some point, sometime over the summer, that'll become a top of some sort. Either if I find a pattern or um, I might kind of jerry-rig design something on my own idea. Anyway, so those are those things. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to um, talk about a little bit today was um, uh, socks. I, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's very warm here today, as I said earlier, it's like unseasonably warm for April, 
think it's 21 degrees Celsius. But it's also crazy dry. I mean, Alberta is always dry anyway, and it's crazy dry right now um, because usually we still have some snow on the ground this time of year, and we haven't really had any snow since. Oh, we had a little, a few little flurries of snowstorms, but we haven't had any significant snow. We barely had any winter, honestly. So it's very dry. <coughs> My husband and I were both complaining about dryness and allergies and stuff the last few days. So anyway, socks. Um, I, I sort of started out, socks were for me kind of the gateway drug to serious addicted knitting. Um, I guess I started knitting and I knit some scarves, just some, you know, simple kind of scarves, start garter stitch mostly, I think. Excuse me. Um, and I knit some little arm warmers and little stripey things and things like that. But uh, it was really when I saw socks and went, oh, I, I want to learn how to knit socks. I want to knit socks. And I started, uh, uh, I, I got a couple of books um, and buds. Um, Getting Started Knitting Socks was, I think, the first one that really um, helped me figure out how to do socks. And I taught myself. And I, once I started knitting socks, and I, this is the first ever sock that I knit. Um, I only knit one. There's so many mistakes in it. Uh, there's mistakes in the ribbing and the round. I wish it was the first time I ever used. Uh, I didn't these on double points. Um, there's all kinds of crazy. You can see like too many stitches in the ribbing there. There's some holes. The heel was a crazy nightmare for me. I don't know if you can see. It was supposed to be a slip stitch heel and I didn't figure out at first that you only slip on every slip the stitches on every second row and I was trying to slip the stitches on both the, the knit and purl side which was crazy. So anyway um, I I knit this one and finished did, knit it all the way to the end as you can see to figure out how a sock is made and then Never knit a second one of these because why would you bother with all those mistakes? But but by the time I finished this, I'd figured out a whole lot of things. So my second pair were quite a bit better. And by my third pair, I kind of had it figured out. And then I started knitting socks and I started uh, finding patterns and figuring out different patterns and um, kind of became obsessed. And I knit socks like a madman for several years. There were a couple years where I did like... <sighs> I can't even remember the name of the... There's a couple of groups on Ravelry. There's the Sockners Anonymous group on Ravelry, and they've got a challenge every month. They've got a couple of challenges every month, and I often did two per month. So there was quite... A, there were about four years there probably where I knit... I would say four or five years where I was knitting between 20 and 25 pairs of socks a year, which is a lot. Turning out a lot of socks. A lot for me. Um... I have sitting here in front of me, it's big and awkward, but I'm going to try and show it to you, my sock drawer. Let's see if I can get this up here. This is my sock drawer. It is, I'm going to show you, it, it's got all those socks under there. There's some on top that I'm going to show you, but there's probably 70 pairs of socks in here, and these are just mine. Um, and then my husband has probably 25 pairs of socks. And then everybody in my family has multiple pairs of socks. Um, probably everybody in my immediate family probably has at least two or three pairs. My sister probably has 10 pairs. And many, many of my friends have socks too. So I have knit a lot of socks. These days, um, this year, I don't seem to be as into socks as I have been in past years. Um, Last year I did the Desert Vista Dye Works um, first um, year-long cow where you knit a pair of socks out of her striped yarn. Every, or no, it didn't have to be a striped yarn. I just out of her yarn every um, month for a year. And there were some great prizes along the way. So I, I did that uh, cow. And then, and there were I pretty much did all vanilla striped socks in that except for maybe two or three pairs. And I think I kind of lost my sock mojo. <laughs> Um, a bit. So I haven't actually completed a single pair of socks I think so far in 2016. I have a couple pairs 
sitting around on the needles, the ones I'm actively working on, um, that those will get completed probably in the next week or so. Um, but I've, t I took, I've taken a little break. I can feel it coming back. So I will probably go back to some socks soon. But um, in the in the sort of journey of after I uh, taught myself how to knit basic socks, I pretty quickly got into pattern socks. And I still love a good pattern sock. Every once in a while, I really crave the complexity of a detailed pattern. But I don't do those very often anymore. I maybe do two or three a year. Mostly I do vanilla socks, which are the, are the best way you know, for showing off self-striping and really pretty variegates, I think. Um, there's a couple of, so I, I went through my drawer and I pulled some things that I was going to show. Um, I think the pattern that I have knit most often that's not just a vanilla sock is Cookie A Monkeys. Um, I think it's a fantastic pattern to show off any yarn, particularly it holds up really, really well to crazy variegate, variegated yarns. And uh, I have three or four pairs, I think I have four pairs in here uh, of mine plus I've given them to other people. Um, I probably knit these about monkeys about 10 times. Um, and see, this is not a wildly variegated yard. It's nice and subtle and the pattern looks great in that. But then these are much more variegated and they still look really good in that. And these are very wildly variegated. And interestingly, although this was one skein of yarn, they're kind of different colors. This one had a lot more blue. And by the time I got to this part of the yarn, a lot more pink. Um, so they kind of match a bit more in the foot, but they don't really match a whole lot in the leg. These two <coughs> pairs are out of um, Becoming Art uh, uh, yarn, dire beautiful yarns. I think she's in the Portland area, maybe. Um, this one is a skein, um, skein sock, which is not the same as her top draw sock, I don't think. It's a tighter twist sock. And I've got a pair, well, no, I lied. I do not have a pair. I have a single one. Um, again, another variegate. Whenever I get a beautiful variegated yarn that I'm not sure what else to do with, it sort of becomes monkeys. So these I love. This is um, Western Sky Knits. Uh, I don't know if you can tell in here, but it's a sparkle yarn. Um, one finished one that's been, and it's been sitting in this bag waiting for its mate for um, six months maybe so sometime soon that will get another sock hopefully but um yeah so so yeah I've done um I, I I've done a lot of sort of nice pretty straightforward patterns this is one of my favorite pairs I wear these a ton and they've held up really well considering how much I wear them I actually I think on this one uh, this one maybe um, re it a toe to it about a year ago because it I snagged it on something and it got a hole and I just took the toe off and put a whole new toe on it because I had some of the yarn left over. Um, but uh, this is a pattern called Charade by Sandra Park. I think it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's a nice simple little textured pattern. Uh, again, this is some more becoming art. This is her, I don't know, this is a base called Cielo, I think. And I don't know if she even does it anymore. It was it's really sturdy for socks. These have held up super well. Um, and uh, then I went and I went on a kick for a while of, uh, I think as a lot of people who've been sock junkies at one point or another have done, I went on a cookie A kick and I knit a ton of cookie A patterns. And I still really, she's amazing, her sock patterns and, and everything from pretty simple, straightforward, textured, interesting patterns like the monkeys, which are easy to memorize and easy to knit to some very, very complex patterns, very complex, mostly cable patterns. And I did some of those. I did, these ones are probably the ones that took me the longest of any of hers. These are backs, but you can see like it's all one by one twisted, twisted stitch, cable pat, crazy cable pattern. Um, you can see the front there. Uh, Goes all the way down the foot that pattern and these took me oh probably two months to finish um these are knit out of some volmeiser um her 100 base which i think is now called pure beautiful color um 
and I knit, uh, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite pairs, favorite, favorite, favorite. This is called Christy. This is out of some cakewalk yarns that I'd been hoarding for a while because she doesn't dye anymore and it was my last skein of cakewalk and it's so pretty. And I finally decided to knit it into this lovely Christy pattern. These have never been worn. <laughs> um, that's how many pairs of socks I have that I have socks I've never worn. Let's see kind of down the front that beautiful cabling pattern again one by one twisted rib. Uh, twisted stitch. Um, these I entered, um, the Calgary Stampede here has a uh, craft sort of show as part of the Western Showcase, as part of the craft show, and one of the categories you can enter into is knitting, and I entered these and I won a first place ribbon for them a couple years back, so that was quite fun. And um, I think last year, the, the last kind of complex pattern I knit uh, was Claire Allen is a designer on Ravelry that has a bunch of a whole bunch of Lord of the Rings patterns and these are kind of weird crazy they have a super pointed toe which I'm not wild about um, but the pattern is the pattern is lovely it's very complex um, that's the front totally different pattern on the back um, lots of fun to knit this is knit out of a hazel knits I think um, and there's a whole book, there's a book actually of, of these patterns and I bought the ebook and I'm, I think uh, I started the second pair in it, which is a Samwise sock. And I think I will actually pick those up and work on those at some point. Um, I do, as I said, every once in a while really enjoy the complex socks. Um, what else did I want to show? Oh, is there another crazy cable one? And these are, again, another pair that <laughs> has never been worn. Sorry, socks. Um, these were one of the ones I knit for one. These were a mystery cow uh, for the Sock Knitters Anonymous SKA, a group on Ravelry um, called Dragon Back by Allison Isaac. Um, these are another ones that have a different they have one pattern on the front. It's all cabley goodness and another different pattern on the back. It's got a little tiny cable in it. And they have beads. This is the only beaded socks I've ever done. So I don't remember, unfortunately, what the yarn was. Oh, I write down what the yarn was on this. Um, oh, no, I didn't. But I think this, I think this is um, uh, K, uh, KPMG. Anyway. Um, and these, another pair that, uh, this is out of um, some of the Desert Vista Dye Works. These are the Mystic Spiral Socks by Josh Ricks. And these have been worn several times. These are really fun. This is one of my only pairs. Pretty that is. Oh. Um, one of my only pairs of toe-up socks. I'm a committed sort of top-down um, uh, magic loop. I did start on double points and taught myself on double points, but as soon as I discovered magic loop, I was away on that, and I don't think I've done double point socks since. Um, I find the needle management kind of a pain in the butt. So um, these are uh, um, these are one of the first, one of the only ones I've ever done the toe up. I, I do intend to do some more toe up socks and sort of discover that but so my go-to is top down magic loop heel flap um i've tried a few other heels when i do stripies like these are another desert mr dye works it's gonna blow up the camera because they're very bright um afterthought heel is i sometimes do on that anyway so that's what i wanted to kind of share with you is the madness of my sock drawer i i think when i see all these other people doing the box of socks and the other sock um knit alongs and stuff and I kind of think oh don't go down that rabbit hole again there's only so many pairs of socks you can give away and I don't really have any more room left in my sock drawer and I tend to um try knit socks more often for my husband now than uh, myself because he doesn't have as many pairs as me but he's not big on the pattern socks he's he's really good about he will let me knit a colorful yarn and stuff he doesn't he's not picky but they don't have to be you know brown or gray or blue navy blue he'll let me 
use lots of lovely um, self-patterning yarns. I use a lot of Noros and stuff like that. Or not Noros, but um, Opal and, and a lot of German yarns and stuff like that for him. But uh, but he's not wild on the, the patterns on the socks. So um, anyway, I'm going to uh, wrap this up pretty quick. This video is getting a bit longer than I intended it to. Um, <clears throat> hopefully I'm going to not have so much trouble getting this one uploaded this week. And... Uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me. I hope that um, until I talk to you next time that you have great knitting mojo.